unity of faith, believing in your only Son, Jesus. And Lord, we'll be so careful to give you the glory and give you the praise. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is to you, O oh God. It is to you. We give this praise. We give this to you, O oh God. Even this message, O oh God, is you. Because it's all about you. So we're thankful this morning, O oh God. We're thankful. We're thankful. In Jesus' name, say amen. 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 Oh, praise to you. You are.
very quickly go with me to the book of Psalms, the 30th chapter, and then we're going to be in Romans, the 8th chapter, the 31st verse, one verse in Romans, and we'll read maybe five in, in, in Psalms 30. The preaching may not be as long as the reading. If you have it, stand on your feet in honor of the Word of God. We stand in honor of the Word of God because whether you know it or not, that's what we have. That's all we have to make it in this last day. The Spirit of God is obedient to the Word of God. It's not going to act outside of the word of the Lord. All right. It's always going to be in agreement with the word. The power of God connected to his word. Because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And we found out in verse 14 that the word became flesh Hallelujah. and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. And I'm so thankful for that. How about you? The word was so pristine back when they wrote the word down and they took it down even in the Old Testament. They would take a bath before and a bath after because they didn't want to take the word in any shape, form, or fashion. And so the word should be uplifted at all times. Can we say amen? Psalms 30 and 3 says, trust in the Lord. And I'm reading from the King James Version for those who may have a living translation. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Oh my goodness. The steps, now drop down to verse 23. I'm sorry, I told you. Verse uh, 3 to 5. Now we're going to go 23 to 25. Amen. Drop down. It says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed bread. Now if you go with me to Romans the 30, uh, the 8th chapter and verse number 31. Very familiar. When you have it, say amen. I'll read it. If you have it, say amen. It says, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us. You may take a seat and have a seat in the word in the, in the house of God in the presence of his company. In the presence of his company. Greetings to the Trinity of the United Methodist Church and Pastor Henry Carter. And of course, Lady Carter. Amen. We do not want to forget you. Amen. 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 On their fifth anniversary, I thank the Lord for the church of the God and all of the guests from Indianapolis and beyond. All my hands and hands. Blessings. Blessings, blessings, blessings. I thank the Lord for this word. I had been teaching. Uh, we had been in a uh, word. It's called Word Week. We teach. Uh, that's going to be every other week. Next week, church, there won't be any. Bible study or Word Week. Word Week follows the next week. Amen. Amen. Uh, word Week is from 10 to 7. I teach Bible study from 10 to 7. Every hour of the hour, there will be Bible study. Amen. To give people an opportunity to hear the Word because it is necessary for the Word. Amen. It's necessary in this last time. And so I'm thankful today. I just want you to look at your neighbor. If you would help me preach this for a second. And just tell them, say, God, God ordered. ordered. Yes, God ordered. God ordered. God ordered. Yeah. God ordered. Yeah. Today I want to be perfectly clear. God created everything, and everything is God ordered. Yeah. Everything is God ordered. 
One of the first things he did was take a chaotic world. Took a chaotic world and he, he began to bring it into his order. In the beginning it says, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the very first thing he did to set order, to show that he's God, he moved upon the face of the waters. But not only did he move upon the face of the waters, but then right after that, the Bible says, he said, let there be. And nothing has ever stopped God's order. Never, nothing has ever stopped God. When he wants something done, he can get it done. I'm so thankful that somebody should have got happy right there. Because, because when God wants something done, he will get it done. If you look at all of the things that he created, it's God ordered. The moon reliably follows a regular pattern. The planets all orbit in an established pattern that is God order. That's God order. Seasons come and seasons go in an arranged and an expected fashion. Now sometimes they throw us off because it, it was a little cool the other day and I, I, I thought maybe we were getting ready to get into a little fog. But I'm thankful that the seasons keep changing. Even though we might get a little hiccup here and there, but the seasons are arranged in an expected fashion. And, and such order in the universe is not by accident. It's not by accident. Tell your neighbor, it's not by accident. But rather it reflects the order of God. Often the psalms that we read, that we read in your hearing, is used to inspire and uplift those who, whose paths seemingly have found good direction from God. Though in today's time, the God card, because everybody uses the God card, well, we use the God card for everything that we don't want a rebuttal for. Uh -huh. Not, okay, we don't want a rebuttal because if I say God said it, then nobody would really challenge me on that because they don't know what God said to me. But I got news for everybody. God ain't said everything. But God is a God of order. Somebody say order. 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 And, and, and they, we use the God card so much that the plumb line of order is now lost in people that believe they, not God, set the order. It's, 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 it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of bad when we actually think we set the order for God. I love praise and worship. I love preaching. I love the church. I, I just love church. Period. I, you you have to you have to understand. I was raised in church. I, I wasn't raised in the street. I was raised in church. I got saved in my life when I was eight years old, and so I don't know anything but God. I don't know anything but church. Now that don't get me wrong. I know some street too. Everybody say, he sets the order. Yes. And because God 
has not set the order, a certain distrust of the church seems to be a part of our cultural characteristic now. And so now more people are leaning on their own instincts, their resources to sort through life's big questions. For, because if I got money, I can put my money to it. But how many know that money can do nothing when your body is wrapped with pain? You might get the best physician, you might pay for the best physician, but he still can't handle the problem. He can't handle the problem. And I know we want to put money, we want to put things, we want to put everything to it. But, but if we're not careful, we'll lean on our own instincts and resources to find out what is the what is God's order for today. For the most part, this search, and we're honest, we, to be honest, it's an honest search. It's an honest search. However, walking the road of faith can become tedious and difficult when we forget that our faith must be tested. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. your faith must be tested. James says it this way, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. When, he didn't say if, he said when. When you fall into divers temptations. He, he just said when, and I guess what? Guess what? I have found myself in the wind. I know you say you're sanctified and filled with the mighty power of God, Holy Ghost, feel fire baptized, got Jesus on your side and you're running for your life. And you do speak in tongues of the Spirit of God to give others and that with fire. But I promise you, your human condition remains the same. He didn't come to save the body, he came to save the soul. Because the soul is what lives forever. And the soul must give an account because the Bible lets us know that the soul that sins shall surely die. And at some point we've got to meet our maker. Now I don't know about you, but I still believe in heaven. And I still believe in hell. I still believe that there's a place that I want to get to. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not working the way that I'm working and doing what I'm doing just for naught. I want to see his face in peace. And all of which is first Peter. Peter says it this way. He said, wherein ye greatly rejoice through, through now for a season. It need be. Everybody shout, it need be. It need be. ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations that the trial of your faith be much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory of the appearing of Jesus Christ. Today, I'm coming to you today to uplift you, to give you some knowledge, to drop something on you so that you would understand the value of God's order. And if God has the order, then you don't have to worry about who's talking about you. You don't have to worry about who's coming up against you. All you have to do is rely on God that orders. So, becomes just wishful thinking. The writer John Maxwell, and I know some of you have heard of him, he said when looking at life struggles, he said everything worthwhile is uphill. Whether you're talking about your personal growth, your personal health, business, or any other aspect of life, nothing of value is easy. Everybody shout, it ain't easy. I'm coming to strengthen the believer today. I'm, I'm not coming so much to, 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 to tell you a, a quick get rich scheme or anything. I'm trying to help the believer that in this time period that we're living in, we're going, it's going to have to be a faith walk. And faith without the test is just wishful thinking. I've got to get in my mind that the God that is in order, he orders things and puts things together. And then he said that, like John Maxwell said, nothing in life is easy. Well, then, in these, this, the, 
me go back just a little bit further in time. The Reverend Frederick Douglass said it this way. He said, it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. However, he also said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Repeat after me, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom yet deprecate agitation are men who want crops without prime plowing up the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without its awful roar, its of as many waters. This struggle, he said, Frederick said, it may be a moral one or it may be a physical or a spiritual one, or it may be both more spiritual and physical. He said, but this, and, but it must be a struggle. People might not get all they work for in this world, but man must definitely pay for all he gets. Somebody give God praise right there. Throughout time, we have seen, we have seen the struggle of the believer. We have seen the struggle uh, 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 of, of our time. In, in our time, where things seem sometimes almost insurmountable, namely a culture that too easily surrenders to personal comfort. Personal, surrenders to personal comfort. The Bible, we, our theme this year is the sacrifice. The sacrifice of praise. And, 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 and God is still asking everybody for sacrifice. He will never let you outdo him. But if you sacrifice, I promise he will make a way. And, and, and we are living in a culture now that don't believe in personal sacrifice. We are narcissistic, we're greedy, you have paranoia, fear, bitterness, and even pseudo-spirituality. Oh yeah, pseudo-spirituality is something fake trying to pass it off as real. And I, 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 I love praising God, but there, those there are some with a higher octane than I have that think that I should never have a cloudy day. I should never have a trial. I should never have a test where they don't know the word of God. How In Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. But but in this psalm is considered what in the Hebrew is called maskil. It's a teaching or instructional psalm. So it is a psalm that that just tells you exactly what you need to do uh, in the time that you need to do it. Yeah, somebody ought to say Amen right there. Because this psalm's deal, this psalm deals with the view and the feelings about the things that are going on around us. And I can't tell you enough about how many people are depressed and how many people are challenged because what they see from the world is crazy. We just had an incident a couple weeks ago. That's crazy. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't fathom in our mind. And it seems as though that the, those that are wicked seem to be prosperous. same psalms. We didn't read this verse, but it says, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Uh, neither be envious against the workers of iniquity, uh, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, uh, and the wither as the green herb. Uh, this, this, this psalm uh, is a description, an explanation of some of the hardest chapters in a believer's life, uh, because providence has its way. We He has already put in our path our release. All we have to do is just keep on walking to get to the release. Uh, said somebody say amen. And, uh, I know people who I know, I, I'm serious, I know people that told me I was sharing with them in the 
Bible study the other, the other day that, that, that people are, can be so so excited about. And I have faith. I, I do have faith. But I'm, I'm a realist also. Uh, when my body aches, I'm like Jesus' Father. Uh, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, when my body is hurting and I hurt people, tell me, don't clean it. Don't, don't clean. Don't you clean that hole. Don't you clean that. Uh, and I have to tell us sister, well, I'm sorry.
way. But the Bible, verse 24, we don't read that so much because it says, and when he falls, oh God, but the God, oh God, he falls, the Lord says, the Lord said, I hold him with my right hand. I hold him with my right hand. Though he fall, look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Order, uh, and not know that I'm a sucker. Uh, he cannot be. 